Hey everyone, it's Cassie. I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome to the Universe Sim 1.0. Today is the day. This is the full release of this game. This game was in early access for 10 years, and we're finally to the point that we can, um, that it's out of early access. The full release is out. Anyone can play this game if they want to, uh, if, and if they give Crytivo like $30 on Steam. Uh, so we probably cannot. Yep. So, I expected this to happen. My previous save from before 1.0 went live today is incompatible now with 1.0. So, I hadn't planned to revisit the save. I was gonna, I was gonna start anew. But even if I wanted to, I couldn't. So, I'm gonna delete all these save files and we're gonna start again. Uh, last time we played, we played on the huge planet sides, I believe. Typically, I like to play on the bigger planet so that we can, you know, fit more stuff in and have more resources and do more um, with the planet that we have. I think here we're going to go large instead of huge. And now we get to customize our game circumstances and our nuggets a little bit. I've unlocked all of the nugget traits. The nugget traits don't automatically unlock. You start out just with no treat, to like neutral nuggets. And then as you progress through the game, uh, you unlock more of them. Wow, excuse me. I'll get into more uh, eventually about how to unlock the nugget traits. I might make a tutorial about how to unlock each one. Um, but there's also a wiki page that I will link in my description where you can see um, specifically what it takes to unlock each of these traits. I like to play with True Believer. I like, I hit a point in the game where 50% of my nuggets don't believe in me, usually roughly 50%. So by setting my nuggets up with a True Believer trait, they are more likely uh, to believe in me in the future. And I also don't tend to modify my game settings at all. Uh, natural disasters, I want to come, you know, occasionally, not super often. Wild animal attacks, same thing. When the wolves come, uh, I don't want that to be too frequent. Exile aggression. I find as often as I play with exile aggression on the neutral setting, they can be pretty aggressive regardless. So I don't want to make them any more aggressive than I need them to be. I can say, you know, all of the exile civilizations could be friendly, but, you know, then we'd have no need for our military and we'd have no need for, or, um, we'd have fewer challenges, I will say. And creator point regeneration, I will leave as standard as well. You can do things to influence the, the rate at which you re regenerate creator points. So you don't, you may not need this. Um, and by making it unlimited or rapid, you really generate them faster than you can spend them, and it's a little bit wasteful. So, let's get going. I will let the intro play for those who've never seen it before. You'll get your first introduction to the game and to the narrator, who is one of my favorite parts of the game. Also, I apologize, the music is a little bit loud. Wake up. Wake up, creator. This is the beginning of your story. It starts with nothing. Nothing but an infinite void. However, you, with a single touch, can awaken the light. And so the universe sprang into being. Worlds filled with endless potential were scattered into the beyond. They formed into many different shapes and sizes. And while most were doomed to drift among the cosmos barren and alone, others 
flourished. These few planets soon became home to the greatest phenomenon of all. Life. However, life is a peculiar thing. It comes and goes as swiftly as a bit of space debris burning up in an atmosphere. A creator's purpose was always that of an observer, to simply admire the fleeting beauty of life's beginnings and ends. Yet, this balance could never last. The issue with allowing a species to evolve independently is that they always fail to do so. For life to have a better chance of succeeding, it needs a helping hand. Ah, here we are. Welcome to Mother Planet. This is a fair sight. For it came to be that there was day and night. Warmth and cold. And water to flow through the planet's veins. The soil was rich with minerals, which gave rise to a thick blanket of green. The perfect ecosystem was formed. It is no wonder, then, why life has chosen to inhabit it. A new species has been born, and they need guidance. This is your purpose now. Their very existence rests in your hands. So, I love that. I love that cutscene. I love that intro. First, what we need to do is place our epicenter. You want your epicenter to be well situated, kind of among all of the different biomes, perhaps not too close to these mountains, which could become volcanoes. But you want them to be near to deserts and especially near to water. So, it's important to look for a good starting position. The mountains that are more likely to become volcanoes are the ones that have indentations, like this one here has that little indent. This one's pretty likely to rotate. There we go. This one's pretty likely to become a volcano, and there will be others as well. Uh, so we need to be. Cautious is the end of that sentence. We want to be cautious about where we where we put down our evolution tower. This looks like a pretty good location. Mm, I'd like maybe a bigger lake. This is a decently sized lake. I'm seeing deserts. I'm seeing mountains. I'm not seeing any mountains that are too suspect. This one's got a little bit of a dip in it. Could become a volcano. That's a pretty good, it's not a bad starting point. I'm taking too long on this step. We are in good shape to start roughly here. We've got an Obtanium nearby, which we don't need to worry about just yet. We've got plenty of wildlife nearby, which we can hunt. There are two biomes here, maybe th three, three or four-ish biomes, all right nearby. So yeah, this is, I think, where I'm going to set up my evolution tower. How do these look? Not too terribly concerning. Yep, we'll put down here. And once we place our evolution tower, we're gonna start like things will things will happen. Stuff is gonna pop off. Take a look at your new subjects. They're called nuggets. 
largely because of their body's apparent inability to keep itself in one piece. Adahi and Elu, Adahi. the architects of their species. And Elu. They are the founders of everything that Nuggets will ever know or achieve. This is quite a beautiful planet. Try not to ruin it, will you? Okay, so what I first want to do before we get too into this is shout out some of the other creators who play this game. I spent some time with my friend Sentient One today. Uh, he is a Twitch streamer, just the loveliest person in the world, and he played this game for a while, and I will link his channel in the description of this video. But while we were playing, that comment, this is quite a lovely planet, try not to screw it up, his narrator said it a million times. Um, so, Sentient One, check him out. He is a Twitch streamer. Uh, the research pipeline is empty again, creator. Yes, I Much know. like the minds of your nuggets. Don't interrupt. Uh, so, he will be playing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as long as his health allows. I also have a friend, Strange Brew Studios, who helped me uh, with a lot of good feedback and advice while I was doing my Season 1 playthrough. Um, he streams on Twitch and posts his VODs on YouTube, so make sure you check out his channels too. I'll post them in the description. Say hi to them. They're lovely people. Um, and they're better content creators than I am. I'm still so new at it that I'm learning. Uh, so. Adahi and Elu, as you as you might have seen, have already started kind of going about their own their own lives. They're building themselves a house right now because they do need a place to live. Houses are one of the few things that you don't need to control. As you progress through the game, there will be other opportunities where you can automate some of the, the more common buildings, but right now residential buildings are the, the ones that are fully automated. I can show you around the interface a little bit while we have a free moment. In the top corner, up left, we have first our, the number of creator points that we've generated. Creator points are used to create, or are used to, you spend them on creator powers. You start with very few creator powers, just a small handful, and as you make your way through the game, the game, you develop more. Right now we have telekinesis, which is which allows us to move things from point A to point B. Rejuvenate, which can be used to heal buildings and people. This one that is French, and I will butcher if I try to say it, that allows you to, to marry two nuggets. Holy ground, which as it says here, blesses the ground that your nuggets live on. Um, it creates a really pretty kind of motif, like a floral motif under all of the buildings too. And that's it. Uh, as we make our way through the game, we'll develop more. They are benevolent and malevolent. You'll get earthquake, you'll get tornado and fire, but you'll also get um, jolt of joy, which makes all the nuggets in your village happy or in your civilization. And there are quite a few. You'll get a uh, trickle effect, which puts down a rain cloud, and that can be used for a number of things as well, such as filling up the reservoirs, providing water to buildings, and uh, putting out fires, as well as removing the pollution from lakes. We have here the number of believers. You can have a different number of believers than you have of nuggets. Not everyone will believe in you all the time. We have the Nugget Happiness. Right now they're kind of, you know, middle of the road. We haven't done a lot with them, so they have no reason to be happy or sad. We also have the Crime Level. Uh, as you create more buildings that are, you know, negatively impactful, your factories, your mines, you, the crime rate in your town will start to tick up. Eventually you can get to a point of, um, adding prisons or rehabilitation centers and police forces. Here in the center we have... This is quite a beautiful planet. Yep. Try not to ruin it, will you? That's two. Uh, here in the center we have our weather. We'll get a more thorough weather readout once we unlock the forecast tower. We also have the, the day slash night cycle. We can see here it's just a little bit into the night. We have a god light which we can dim or brighten. Doesn't, it doesn't do too much. We have our, our alarm. So like I mentioned, when wolves attack, I can hit my alarm and my nuggets will all 
run home or run to bunkers and protect themselves. And then we have our speed controls. We can speed up quite a lot for pause. And we have a screenshot button. In top right. Oh. That message looked important. Elu has a message for us. Dear Creator, we don't mean to sound like we're complaining, but we've had a tough time doing all of the work with just the two of us. Is there any way we can expand our civilization? Maybe bring in a few extra helping hands. I sincerely hope there's an easy way of going about this, one that does not involve months of discomfort and weird cravings, followed by hours of excruciating pain. Kind regards, Elu. Sorry to disappoint you, Elu, but... I didn't think you knew anything about reproduction, Creator. What we have to do here is use the creator power that's French and unpronounceable by me to create a marriage between Adahi and Elu. Once we've selected the creator power, we just need to find them both. Where is Adahi? Oh, he's right there. Okay. And then press control and select each of them. Love is in the air. And that's it. Nuggets will only reproduce and create baby nuggets if they are in a marriage. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Planet filters. You can learn a lot about the state of your civilization through all the planet filters. If you love data, this is a good place to hang out because you can see how hungry everyone is and thirsty. You can see how the buildings are doing, the toxicity levels of the lakes, the exile, the friendliness of the exile civilizations. This is a uh, this is just a data hub, really. I love a I love an infographic as much as the next guy, so I'm in here a lot. Uh, you can, this little home button will just fly you back to your epicenter. We have our nugget panel. You can see here we have two nuggets. That is all. They're both laborers by occupation. They're five years old, each of them. And you can see their, their stats. Uh, they're a little bit thirsty. They're not super hungry. They're not very strong. Um, you can also, as you progress through the game, you'll be able to educate your nuggets. You can see here whether they are educated or uneducated, whether they're married, oh, would you look whether they at believe that? in you. A little baby nugget. We have another message. Aren't they adorable when they're young? From Elu again. Don't get to it. Dear Creator, we are struggling to agree on names for our little ones. And he keeps wanting to call them something trivial like stick and stone, and I'm about ready to break his bones. I suggested some more appropriate names, but he believes I'm trying too hard. Can you please help us settle this argument? Help Adahi and Elu name the newborn nuggets. Click on a nugget in order to open, it says his panel, but I'm gonna say their panel. Not all the nuggets are masculine. And in doing this, we will receive one extra believer and 15 discovery points, which we've not yet talked about. Attached though, they're still mortal after all. So here are our Plus, little baby nuggets. Soon be old enough to have an opinion and make questionable life decisions. Yep. Let's see how much you like them then. All we the need... summer sun is excellent for Wait, slow we... roasting a few nuggets. All we need to do is click on a nugget to open their panel, click into the name field, and change it. Uh, I'm just gonna say I actually I'm gonna just change their names. Let swap them. Stick. And where'd the other one go? there nuggets are all unique to one another I don't know if although the there are stick some was. things that are shared between nuggets these include the need for certain essentials like food and water a stable roof over their heads and an occasional nap they want to learn build discover and create it would all be quite inspirational if they also didn't happen to be the species that initially thought their shadows were trying to eat them. Yep. Okay. So, in addition to the nugget panel, we also have like a high level overview of nugget stats. We currently have two adults and two baby nuggets. And if we mouse over this, normally we, there we go. We can see our total population. I don't need to read this all out to you. We can see a high level overview of all of the nuggets that are in our nugget panel. 
it's really helpful to see how many are sick, how many are unmarried, um, how many are educated. This is quite a beautiful planet. Try not to ruin it, will you? That is three. I'm going to count these. And we also have our building list panel. Right now, all we have is a residential building and our epicenter. Um, but I actually should be doing research today. I'll talk about the research panel here in a moment, but I want to get some things researching so that we can uh, get some buildings going up. Natural evolution is a wonderful thing to observe. Unfortunately, it usually ends poorly. We don't have time for that. Fortunately, you have the ability to influence your civilization's evolution and improve its chances of survival. You can prioritize whatever your heart desires, but remember that the heart is idiotic at best. So use your head instead. That's a pretty good motto to live by. Well, unless you're mining stone, of course. You don't even need me. He's gonna just walk you through this whole game. Okay, bottom right. In the bottom right, we have our news panel. This is where you'll see all of the little notifications that are coming up kind of outside of the game in the bottom right corner, or outside of this panel. Nuggets who believe in you, the fact that you're not researching, the buildings that are up or collapsing, nuggets that are sick or infected, lakes that are infected, all will appear here. We also have our... This isn't something that opens up into a bigger panel if you click it. You have information about your atmosphere, how many trees you have, what your uh, H2O or your O2 levels look like, how polluted you are. We have our resource statistics screen. Again, some, some data, some visualizations about your data, how many resources you have over time. And here we go, the achievements panel. Each of those messages that we have opened so far from Elu has been an achievement. Once we've finished them, we have unlocked, like you can see here, these little achievements. Achievements can also help us unlock some pretty cool stuff in the game if we get them right. Uh, and we'll get to that a little later. We have our resources here. You can see we have 82 wood and 20 stone. We have no water. And we have 26 food. So what we're researching right now is water wheel. And that'll allow us to build a water pump. I want to do that before I open up the research menu and start talking to you about resources. Or about research items. Here is our nearest body of water. So I'm going to open up my building menu and select utilities. Here I'll find the water pump that we just unlocked. Water pumps have to be placed right on the edge of a body of water. Resources, no, I don't know why I want to say resources so badly. Reservoirs don't need to be placed on the edge of the water. And in fact, you can see this one has a radius around it. This reservoir will service every building that is in the radius. So I want to make sure that my Evolution Tower, the residential building, they all kind of fall into the reservoir's radius. And when new buildings come up outside of that radius, we'll build another reservoir that encompasses those buildings. You can see here there are a bunch of little lock icons. Right now we're in the Stone Age, which is the very first age in this game. Uh, that is why there's a little one here. All of the buildings that we can build right now are Stone Age buildings. As we progress through the game, we'll be able to dial it back if we want to, such that like when we open up the medieval era and we're building... For tutors... a nugget to decide that drinking the brown, filth-infested lake water is less trouble than walking all the way to a well, you may want to consider building a few more, creator. Uh... I don't know what to do first. Let's do this message. Heal a nugget. Dear creator, my friend Adahi never had a particularly pleasant face, mean, but it's somehow looking worse lately. I haven't seen this shade of green before in my life. I tried to find a witch doctor, but they're all out at some sort of medical conference. Someone apparently discovered a better method for removing a splinter than amputation, so they're all riled up. 
I can't stand the idea of losing my dear friend. I only have one. They're getting worse by the day. Is there anything you can do to help? Yes. You can see here, heal Adahi with the Rejuvenate Creator Power. I'm going to accept. That nugget isn't looking too good. I don't think purple bumps are very common. Heal the nugget, Creator. I can't bear to watch someone be sick. It makes my insides turn out of worry, of course. This is quite a beautiful planet. Try not to ruin it, will you? Is that four? I think that's four. Okay, so we need to find Ad. Oh, he's. We need to find Adahi. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to use our menu. You can click here and then fly to the person you're looking for. And with Rejuvenate, he's all healed. Okay, so I had just explained... I was in the process of explaining... explaining... the uh, eras. If When we unlock Tudor era buildings, medieval era, um, we can... it will default to putting those down. There will be a little two here. It's in numerals. And by default, when you click... Uh, when you create a new building, it'll be in that era's like facade. And with that era's benefits. You can, if you need to scale back, click on a previous era and build those buildings. It'll be less resources, but less effective, and you will have to upgrade it eventually. Okay, so we have... Oh. <laughs> you, can, you can open your creator powers by clicking this little button here in the bottom left. I just use my uh, scroll wheel. You click your scroll wheel, it'll open right up. And research. research. Research is the last thing to talk about. First, I want to note that we have 60 discovery points. Discovery points are generated similarly to creator points. They're based on the number of nuggets that believe in you, as well as a number of factors, including how much entertainment you have. Like if you have, for instance, movie theaters or schools, they generate creator or discovery points a little faster. Discovery points are used to buy research items that are special. Um, and that are instant learn. Right now you can see we're cycling through a research point or a research item right now. Normally they take a certain amount of time and eventually they'll unlock, but some research items, the yellow ones, are the ones that you can buy with discovery points and they are instant learn. You can see we're here, right at the very start of the Stone Age. I actually can't scroll over any further, but like we're very at the beginning. It is a long road. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Uh, it is a long road to get to end game. And new stuff has been added. This whole upper tree is new to 1.0 before Actually, in fact, I think some of this down here is even new to 1.0. It previously stopped, I think, right around here-ish. So, a bunch of new research that we have in 1.0, and I'm pretty excited about it, if I'm being honest. And that is the gist. We have our... Reservoir is finished over there but empty, and our water pump is still not created. So we're a little behind in that. We're gonna prioritize the water pump, that way if someone wants to build a house or something, they'll wait until after the water pump is done. And we can also... No, we can't. If we had opened up trickle effect, we would be able to put uh, a rain cloud over this. Okay, so... Oh, what I want to do is speed the game up a little bit. We can also help buildings along using the telekinesis power. So you can see this one needs 5 wood and 21 stone. If we use telekinesis, we can grab the stone and pop it down onto our structures to help it along. What do we still need? One stone, and it looks like Elu's on it. 
Unlike other water sources, wells do not contain dangerous bacteria and parasites. Your nuggets will surely appreciate having a stable stomach for a change. The trees must be undergoing significant stress. They've started to go bald. Adahi and Elu are both sick. So we're just popping I'm out. glad to see you taking such good care of your subject. Quick rejuvenate on each of them so that they are no longer sick. Eventually we'll open up, like, like Elu said, we'll open up a witch doctor. But for right now, they just need to cope when they're not feeling so well. So we haven't really opened anything up yet, uh, aside from water pumps and reservoirs. We're working on it though. You can see what each research item does by mousing over it, and I didn't actually do that at all when I was first up in this menu. Primitive tools, your nuggets learn by default without your intervention. It unlocks tools for them, which they need so that they can build the residential buildings and build the buildings that you request. So you can't really get away from, you can't get away from that one. Fire, they also automatically learned. And it just unlo unlo la la la, unlocks lights in the buildings. Not a big deal. Water wheel was how we got water pump. It requires primitive tools. Some of the... Uh, some of the research items do have prerequisites. For instance, this is an easy one to grab. Ministry of Agriculture requires cooking utensils and town hall, neither of which we've researched yet. So, you know, you have to make your way through the tree. I can't just jump to something. But even if I do make my way through the tree, some things need you to come back to them. For instance, like I said, Ministry of uh, Agriculture requires a town hall, which is over here. So we are also currently, we have learned water flow study, which unlocks the reservoir. Leather buckets, which is a plus one drinking capacity in reservoirs. We're currently learning well shaft framework, which is form work, sorry, which is one drinkable capacity in reservoirs and 15 refill rate in reservoirs and water dowsing, which is plus 10 in reservoirs. So we really want to make sure our nuggets have a lot of drinkable water. You can research up to five things, or you can queue up up to five things to be researched, but only one item will research at a time. I'm also going to add primitive cooking, fishing, and old one toolkit. I'm doing these in an order I don't like, so I'm going to have to cope with that. Actually, I can... Old one toolkit and then fishing and then cooking. We'll go with. Oop. Two of our nuggets are having a private moment, so I'm gonna come over here and see how see how everything looks. Our water pump is up. We have a new baby. If you're curious what this monolith is, it is called an obtainium. It's a type of ore, similar to, you know, iron or steel, and it is not used t till you get near the end of the game. It can be used, it can be mined from this you know, obelisk, this monolith and used to build nuggetoids, uh, among other things. We have our temple. Temple requires a staff. Um, it requires four nuggets, and we only have four nuggets. I'm not gonna staff it fully. I am gonna staff one. Here, I thought that building was just a decoration. Your temple helps with the generation of creator points, and you can also cruelly drop nuggets into these little grinding gears as sacrifices, which also help with your creator points. I prefer to make creator points passively. <laughs> but later in the game, we'll get a quest from a broken-hearted nugget, or a message from a broken-hearted nugget, asking us to exact revenge on someone, and this would be a good way to do it, to drop them into our little 
meat grinder. Some things this I wanted... is quite a beautiful planet. Try not to ruin it, will you? That's five. Uh, there are some things I wanted to talk about in the build menu. For those who are new to the game, we have a legendary building section. Legendary buildings are earned through blueprint pieces. Blueprint pieces are collected from mystical boxes, and we'll talk about mystical boxes later. But essentially, there's nothing you can directly do to influence the the unlocking of legendary buildings. Basically, you have to find mystical boxes and open them, and each one should give you one blueprint piece, and it requires four, four blueprint pieces to unlock a building. Buildings are, you know, things like the Eiffel Tower, the Pyramids, the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa, Notre Dame, and you can put them down kind of like you would put down parks, which is the second thing I wanted to talk about in the recreation section. I can hear water pumps grinding to an icy halt, creator. It's all up to the reservoirs now. It's winter. That's what that means. In winter... The lakes freeze over, and all of the, the water buildings, which would be, you know, the water pumps, the fishing huts, and in fact, I think the farms as well, become uh, non-functional. So we are leaning on the water from our reservoirs right now to get us through the winter. Hopefully we have enough. The first snow of winter has fallen. I hope you have a nice pair of fuzzy slippers. So parks. Parks are usually... Some parks are automatically opened up just as you... as you make your way through the game. However, some parks are unlocked when you finish achievements. In fact, I think one park we have... Yes, Anti-City Alley. This was uh, automatic. This is the only automatic park? to my mind. And for everything else, we have to complete achievements. Oh no, sorry. Anti-City Alley is earned from an achievement. It's this one over here, Sleepy Spring Sanctuary, that just comes from research. Our nuggets are now stronger. They have what they call accessories, and I don't really know what that means, if I'm being honest. But we also have unlocked engineering huts. Engineers are buildings that we can put down. They have radii as well, or radiuses. And all of the buildings within this engineering hut's radius will automatically be repaired. Buildings degrade over time. But by building and staffing engineering huts around other buildings, the engineers will automatically maintain those buildings for us. I don't know why I'm looking at nothing. Sorry. We have one more message. Help Stick finish his hut. Dear Creator, I heard that you have the power to create miracles. I've been trying to build a hut for Stone and myself to live in, but I fear that I have thrown my back out with all the heavy lifting. I can hardly lift my hammer now, let alone collect all of the resources I still need. If I could just get a few more materials, we can finally finish our dream home. I think Stone might leave me if I don't get this finished soon. I'm sure someone with a far larger set of muscles and a luxury hut will sweep them away. I bet they'll have a splash pool too. I can't let that happen. Help Stick finish their hut. Use, tele use the telekinesis creator power to deliver the missing resources to the construction site. 
So this he... one is just being lazy. Yeah. You might be too kind for this world creator. Oh well, yeah. I suppose it'll give you some time to practice your powers while that nugget lays in a hammock sipping a mojito. Okay, to do this particular achievement, you have to find the residential building that Stick and Stone are building. It's usually the only other one. This is quite a beautiful planet. Try not to ruin it, will you? That's six. Um, you can see here again that we need five stone and five wood in order to complete this. So, using the telekinesis creator power, we will help. So, you've uprooted a tree. Now what? Now we throw it down. Because we gave or supplied this building, this construction, with all of the wood and stone that it needed, we got that achievement. It doesn't look like any achievements have been added. Maybe. Some of these are new words. Hag King. This is new to me. So it's possible some of these were added with 1.0. I don't think I've ever noticed how pretty the unobtainium is in the winter. Alright, we will give this a couple more minutes and then I have to finish for the day. I want to do longer videos, I will do longer videos, but I don't Your have Your civilization is a constant source of entertainment. I don't have the time today to give this game that I want to give it. So look forward to longer videos in the future. But right now, I have the time I have. Okay, so I want to make sure that I leave a couple laborers because it's your laborers that will construct your buildings. And we've also just unlocked fishing, which means that we can now build the fishing pier. Fishing pier is in resource management. And like the water pump, it needs to go directly onto the edge of a body of water. I'm trying to see how close I can get it to that pump. Uh, the fishing pier will be closed for a while because it's winter. That's not a big deal. Our nuggets have a tiny bit of food. Not as much as I would like them to have. But I can help supplement. Like, if I were to kill a wolf for them, they would have a little bit more food. Things are beginning to look green and happy again. Let's take a moment to appreciate it before you do something wrong. Or we can make it through spring, or make it through to spring, and once our fishing hut is done, we'll be able to put a couple people in it, and have some fresh fish for our nuggets to eat. Nuggets can eat raw food, which is what they're doing now. It just isn't as beneficial to them or as satisfying as if they were to eat cooked food. We will eventually unlock an eatery, and once we've done that, we can assign nuggets to cook the food. That makes the raw food stretch a little further. So like, for instance, and this could be wrong, um, one raw food can make you five cooked foods, and then those five cooked foods are better for your nuggets. More satisfying. All right, here is where we're gonna call it for the day. We've been going for about 40 minutes. I've over explained a lot and my voice is a little bit tired. So uh, this is this is where we're gonna say goodbye for the day. Um, make sure you check out those Twitch streamers I told you about. They are excellent people and very good friends. I also have a friend on YouTube who plays this game. Uh, his this handle... is quite a beautiful planet. 
Try not to ruin it, will you? Yeah, that's seven. Uh, his handle is Quick Entertain Me. His name is Joshua. He also plays this game. He's fantastic as well. Check him out. I'll put his his channel down in the description as well. Um, thank you again for hanging out with me. Thank you for being here for Universe Sim 1.0. I cannot tell you how excited I am uh, to finally have this uh, in my hands in the wild. I hope you have an excellent day. Uh, I will talk to you soon. <laughs>